Hello, this is Peter from astronomydrawings.com. It's a bit cloudy and cold today, so I think it's the perfect time to make this video about comparing binary viewers and binoscopes. Most people agree that observing with both eyes is a much more satisfying experience. There's a much more enhanced feeling of total immersion. Objects get an almost 3D effect and there's no eye fatigue overall, so it's much more relaxing. Binary viewers are, of course, an ideal entry-level means to discover the world of binocular observation and you can already find one for as little as three to four hundred euros. This may seem extremely cheap compared to a binoscope for which you need to fork out many thousands. However, a binary viewer is, like any astronomical equipment, a compromise that comes with a serious amount of drawbacks. First of all, a binary viewer has an internal light path of 100 to even 250 millimeters, and no telescope is capable of providing this much in focus travel, apart from maybe Schmidt Cassegrain's and similar. Therefore, on most telescopes, you need to use a corrector lens in front of the binary viewer to extend the light path. The advantage is that this lens works like a Barlow and increases the focal ratio of the optical system, meaning that errors typical of telescopes with a short focal ratio, such as coma, will diminish or even disappear. The disadvantage, however, is that telescope power will increase likewise. Count at least a magnification increase of 1.2. Worse still is that this corrector lens, or OCA, goes very deep into the focuser and consequently you'll lose a significant part of your light. Brighter objects such as open clusters or globulars suffer less from this and being able to observe them with both eyes with such an incredible almost 3D spacewalk experience will more than make up for it. Objects with a lower surface brightness, on the other hand, will suffer a lot, as if your beautiful 18-inch scope is being cut down to a mere 12 to 14-inch. Some people can live with this and prefer the two-eye experience with light loss over observing with one eye only. Some of the more expensive binary viewer brands offer a 2-inch corrector lens which will allow you to capture most if not all, of the light. But then, we're already talking about a 1300 euros or more price range, without eyepieces. If you have an Opsonian telescope, another, albeit more drastic, solution would be to cut the trusses of your telescope and install a larger secondary, which would allow you to use your binary viewer without any corrector lens. Unfortunately, also, this comes with some serious drawbacks. The cheaper binary viewers come with an opening of 22 to 23 millimeters, which would barely be adequate if you use them with a corrector lens, because the corrector narrows down the light beam. Without corrector, these cheaper binary viewers will never be able to capture an entire broad light cone of an F5 scope. More light loss. More expensive binary viewers have a much more generous aperture, even up to 40 mm, and come with 2 inch diagonals to direct the light towards the eyepieces. But, as I said, these binary viewers are costly, plus you have to count the costs of a big enough secondary, plus this operation is not reversible unless you buy a new set of trusses or unless you're really clever and manage to invent a system to slide your entire light cage up or down. Think carefully before you take out your saw. So you've cut your trusses, install a bigger secondary and your expensive binary viewer comes nicely in focus without any significant light loss or extra power. Problem solved and binocular observation without compromise? Hmm, not really. As I mentioned before, a binary viewer has a significant light path, and the bigger the binary viewer, the longer it gets. This means that the collimation errors of your binary viewer become more enhanced, and since your eyepieces work like a magnifying glass, 
These collimation errors become quite apparent in high power eyepieces. With my small cheap binder viewer I was able to use 5mm eyepieces but with this big 2 inch I couldn't use eyepieces smaller than 10mm limiting telescope power of my old 18 inch Dobsonian to a very disappointing 206. Please don't try to fiddle with the collimation of your binder viewer because more than likely you're going to screw it up. Furthermore, the binder viewer's beam splitter loses some light on its own and therefore you will never obtain exactly the same light gathering power as without the binder viewer. Finally, no binder viewer, apart from the 2 inch Seabird, will accept 2 inch eyepieces, making low power ultra wide views impossible. Now, I've heard people comment that, when using both eyes, eyepieces with a field of view greater than 70 degrees, such as these, are useless, because you wouldn't be able to see the edge of the field of view. But, to my opinion, that is completely untrue. Actually, to my personal experience, this may be true when using eyepieces such as these with, with a very short eye relief. But... When you take, for example, these 22mm Naglas with their very generous 20mm eye relief, well, I can clearly see the edge of a field of view. Actually, eyepieces such as these become like a big window in front of you, and the field of view becomes nearly endless. To summarise, binder viewers don't need to break the bank, and even the cheap ones will give you an unforgettable taste of the joys of observing with both eyes, whereas the more expensive ones will allow you to do so with a very limited loss of light, although even those present some problems, as I've explained. Now, let's talk about binoscopes. Binoscopes allow you to observe with both eyes without any compromise. No light loss whatsoever. No additional magnification and with two-inch eyepieces if you so desire. Just be careful not to buy eyepieces that are too large, okay? But, as I said at the beginning, they are terribly expensive. Conclusion? This is a no-brainer, right? Because a binoscope can never justify its enormous cost with just a tiny little amount of extra light. Hold on a minute, because we are comparing apples and oranges. A binder viewer will split a single light beam of, for example, an 18-inch telescope in two and will divert each of these beams to your eyes. But your optical system will remain 18-inch, even downgraded a bit because of the light loss of the binder viewer. An 18-inch binoscope, on the other hand, collects twice the amount of light of an 18-inch monoscope and should therefore be compared to at least a 25-inch monoscope plus binary viewer. Actually, even a bit bigger still because of the binary viewer's light loss. So, if you have decided that binary viewing is the way for you, and you want to buy the scope of your dreams, and you are targeting 18 inch, well, then you should compare an 18 inch telescope plus high quality binary viewer to a merely 12 inch binoscope. Suddenly, a binoscope doesn't sound so expensive anymore. Exit Pupil A 25-inch with binary viewers and a couple of 22mm naglers, assuming no corrector lens and that your binary viewer can take 2-inch eyepieces, results in a magnification of 144 and a field of view of 0 0.6 degrees. An 18-inch binoscope gathers at least the same amount of light, so without even considering the binary viewer's light loss, but offers a magnification of only 104 with the same eyepieces and a field of view of 0 0.8 degrees. Therefore, with a binoscope it is possible to observe objects with a lower surface brightness or it is possible to fit most of the Orion Nebula in the same field of view. The advantage of the 25-inch with binary viewer would be resolution. A 25-inch yields the theoretical resolution of 0 0.18 second of arc, whereas an 18-inch binoscope 
yields the resolution of an ordinary 18 inch, being 0 0.25 second of arc, a 0 0.07 second of arc difference. But, as we all know, 99.9% .9 of the time, our atmosphere will impose a much higher resolution limit, so the difference is merely academic. Talking about our atmosphere and seeing, a binary viewer splits one signal in two and sends it to each of our eyes. A binoscope sends a completely different light signal to each of our eyes. This means that our brain gets to choose the best of two images and hence a binoscope is a little bit less sensitive to bad seeing. The disadvantages of a binoscope are of a completely different nature. It is perfectly possible to transport and assemble a 25-inch monoscope plus binoscope viewer on your own and it will fit in any SUV or minivan. Assembling this baby on your own is impossible. And even with two people, it will take you at least two hours. So if you want to avoid the hassle of assembly and disassembly, you need a very big lorry or a very big trailer, with the risk that you will damage your beautiful scope. So I've given up on hauling around my binoscope and decided that from now on, I'll just observe here from home, even if my sky isn't perfect. And finally, as I also said in my other video, the reason why you don't see a lot of these big binoscopes around is simply because they are too complicated to make. And apart from a few very courageous home builders, no professional telescope manufacturer, apart from one for as far as I know, is willing to take the commercial risk. That's it. I think that I've explained all the advantages and disadvantages of binary viewers and binoscopes. So now it's up to you to make your choice. But I'm pretty sure that now you'll agree with me that this choice isn't as straightforward as it might have seemed at first sight. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'd be very much obliged.